Come on, somebody. God wants you to have the fullness of life. Come on, Lord. And what better place than to praise God yes. and in his house? Amen. God wants you to praise him. Yes, he does. Yes. God wants you to be excited yes. about the salvation that you have. Wow. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. If you're not excited, you know what somebody wants what you're not excited about. Somebody help me. Somebody help me up in this place. If you don't have no joy, then why would I want what you got if you don't have joy and you got it? Somebody help me. If you're not excited about what you have, why would I want something you ex you're not excited about? But if I see you excited, come on, somebody, when you're going through hell, I can say, man, I want that because if I if she can shout and praise God, joy. I said it's unspeakable joy. That means I can't even explain to you in words how I feel. It's unspeakable. You better help me up in this place. That means I can't even tell you in words how good I feel about the salvation that I have. And if you got that kind of joy, man, the only way you can express it is by saying thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Lord. Father, I thank you. That's the only way that you can express how Somebody help me. Yes. Unspeakable joy. Yes, Lord. And too many times we consume about what's going on around us. Yes. That we can't even thank God because we're too busy looking at the circumstance uh -huh. and not the one that who can deal with the circumstance. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, somebody. We don't we look at the situation and not the situation fix us. Come on, somebody. We look at the condition and not the one who can change the condition. Come on, somebody. You look at him, you know your condition is going to change. Come on, somebody. Because God will never leave you in a messed up state. God is always moving you forward. And some of us are stuck right where we at. And God said, I'm trying to get you out of this mess. I'm trying to move you forward. But you steady looking back. And God said, I'm trying to move you out of where you at. And you need to get out of it with joy. Yes. Oh, somebody help me. Yes. I got a word for today, but you need to have joy when the word comes. Because yes. you ain't got joy when the word comes, you won't receive the word. Yes. You got to open yourself up to receive what God has for you. Amen. Somebody help me. Come on, God. I got joy. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because I know where I was. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Come on. Fifteen years ago, I know where I was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know what I was doing. Yes. And it took God to snatch me out of where I was. Mm. You got to have some joy. Yes. Somebody help me. Amen. Right. Ain't no way in the world you're supposed to come in no church and it's quiet and you hear a pin drop. Especially doing work. I can understand when the word is coming for, but if it's praise and worship time, if it's time to praise God, how you gonna come up in a church and it's quiet up in there and all you hear is a praise and worship team? You don't hear nobody thanking God, you don't hear nobody giving God praise, you don't see no hands lifted, you just see people looking. Is that is that come on somebody? What that tells me, come on somebody, you either don't have a relationship with God or you either ain't got no praise in you. It's one or the other. Come on, somebody. But if you go to a place uh, where people know God uh, and God has done something in their life, uh, how can you sit on praise? Uh, how can you sit on shouting? Uh, how can you sit on lifting your hands? Uh, when God been that good to you? You mean to tell me something wrong with your hands? Uh, I remember when you was in a club. Uh, you used to lift your hands to the music. Uh, you used to shake it. Come on, somebody. I don't care what kind of club you was in. Uh, I don't care if it was a, 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 a R&B club, uh, a country club. Uh, you 
be able to call somebody. Yes. Come on. Come on but the enemy came, man, I'm trying to tell you. There's got to be some praise up in here. Yeah. I said I got a word. But God is stirring me up about this praise. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When, it's, when Jehoshaphat, when the enemy came against Jehoshaphat, yes. the Bible says uh, that they came to Jehoshaphat uh, and said the enemy is coming against you. A multitude. Uh, and Jehoshaphat, uh, the scripture says uh, that he got the people together uh, and they begin to fast. Uh, and the Bible says uh, as they begin to seek the Lord, uh, to inquire of the Lord, uh, to see what the Lord had to say. Uh, and the Lord told them, uh, stand still. Yeah. There's no need uh, for you to fight in this battle. Uh, I'm here to tell Say it any way you want to go. If you don't know where to start, 
Just yeah. say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 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 God for the mess that they're in. Now he's profound. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had them in the dumps. Come on, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They was down and out. Wait a minute, but they got around these church folks, and now they're talking about thank you, Jesus. Why are they saying thank you, Jesus, and I allow all this hell to break loose in their life? And then you know what? You know what? After you say thank you, Jesus, you know what you say again? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then you know what? You can switch it up. Thank you, Lord. See, see, because, see, you not only see, you said thank you, Jesus, because Jesus means Savior. That means I thank you for saving me. I, I, and, 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 and the devil said, wait a minute, they're in some mess, and they thanking Jesus. They thanking, thank you, Jesus. What, what you're saying is, I'll thank you for saving me. Yes. Yes. And then, then you turn around and say, thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord means he's, he's, he's Lord in your life. Come on, somebody. You're serving him. Come on, somebody. So you turn around and say,
Jesus. He was excited. He, you, you, he almost wanted you to see him. Just, he was enjoying where he was at. Come on now. My, my, my. God said, look at him. Look at him. Praise me. Because even though he's found, he's free. He may be bound physically, but he's free in his spirit. And I can tap into his spirit just like I can tap into yours. And as I begin to go through what I went through, God says, son, look at little Ricky. You can praise me. You drive in a truck, Ricky can do that. He said, one thing I always desired was to have a girlfriend. Come on, sir. Mm. When they read his obituary, he said, I always wanted to have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jesus. My, my, my. Jesus. But I never mm -hmm. will experience Jesus. that. I just wanted to run one time. Mm -hmm. But I never could experience that. But one thing I experienced yes, Jesus. was my relationship with God. Yes. Amen. And nothing can compare Amen. to the praise Amen. that God put on the inside of that young man. You mean to tell me you ain't got no praise? You can't get about an hour out of 24 of praise. See, things need to be broken this morning. You won't be like this next week. You will come up in here with praise on you. Because you need to praise them throughout the week. And you know when you praise them, when what? If there's adversity going to come your way this week. And that's when you need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because everything is going to be all right. The earth is the Lord and the Lord is there. Let me tell you something. You better, you better. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The devil watches you. Yeah. <coughs> he watches you. Paul said, this always jumped out to me. You know, man, I, I, I got to get this to you. This is what God wants you to have. Let me tell you something. Paul said that there was a messenger. The key is messenger. Say messenger. messenger. There was a messenger from Satan. Yes. Sent to buffet me. Mm -hmm. Messenger means someone got a message. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, sir. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Uh -huh. That means somebody got a message. And the messenger was sent by the devil. So the message came from the devil. Yeah. And Paul said that this, this, this message was a thorn. Mm -hmm. Woo. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. But one thing about a messenger, he has to always go back to the one who sent the message to give a report. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Come on now. Yeah. Did it get delivered? Mm -hmm. okay. huh? Because the mailman is accountable for delivering you the mail. Uh -huh. And if he don't, he's accountable to someone. Uh -huh. Who's somebody? Boy, this, come on, yes, come on, come on this, this, this. Tell it, tell it. And so the devil, the scripture says, sent a messenger or a demon to Paul to buffet him, yeah. to torment him. Yeah. And Paul said he prayed to the Lord three times to remove this thorn because it bothered him. Woo. How many of you know you got some things bothering you? Oh, amen. Okay, somebody. Amen. You got some things bothering you right now. Amen. You got some people bothering you. Amen. You got some infirmity bothering you. You got something bothering you. Amen. Can I tell you something? You always gonna have something bothering you. 
But what's bothering you should move you. The scripture says that Paul said he prayed to the Lord three times. Because it was bothering him. I got to see what's going on with this situation. Wait, this is bothering me. Now, here's the messenger. No, it's bothering him. Right. <laughs> now, Paul prays and the Lord said, oh, Lord, remove the storm. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient enough for you. Because in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. In other words, the Lord said, don't pray about that no more. Because I'm being perfected in you. Amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, Lord, get this out of my life. No, I'm being perfected in you. If I get it out of your life, I won't be perfected in you. Come on now. And the watch that Paul said, you know what, then I'm just going to rejoice. Hey. I'm not going to rejoice about my infirmity. I'm going to rejoice he's using me. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be used to God? What Paul realized, he needed that infirmity. You know, I used to wonder about little Ricky. I said, Lord, why can't you just heal him? See, I ask God those difficult questions. <laughs> and he always answered me. I said, Lord, why, why, why could you just heal him? What? And he always asked me, see, what, what, what you learn about God when you have a relationship with God? He'll ask you a question with a question. And you'll answer the question. <laughs> and I said, Lord, how come you wouldn't heal him? I mean, how come he said he was healed? God's son, is he healed in the wheelchair or is he healed if he's standing up? What kind of healing are you talking about? First of all, let's get this straight. Oh, well, physically healed. What's more important, his spirit being healed or his body being healed? Amen. 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 Then God said, all right, now, I got a question for you. If I was to heal, would he serve me? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen. I was like, Amen. Hallelujah. So I knew you could answer that question. Because only I know. Wow. Hallelujah. If I remove that thorn, will you continue to seek me? Because the thorn caused Paul to seek you. That's right. Come on, God. Another person asked me, he says, man, why did God make people to, what, what, you know, why, why can't he just make us serve him? I was like, brother, God don't work that way. But God asked me, but you know, I went to Lord, I said, you know, you know, I like to ask this question. Well, Lord, how come you just didn't make us serve as good and evil? And why, how come you just didn't make us serve him? He said, that's not the kind of God. I know that. I said, but I'm just asking. He said, well, let me ask you a question. If you was me, how would you create? See, he talked to you like that, don't he? I said, well, you know I would me. Do everything you did. <laughs> and if I made man, I would wonder. I would make him serve me because that's just not fun. Ain't no fun in that. Ain't no thrill in that. Ain't no glory in that. I said, you know, but I, I would give him his own free will. So that he could have a relationship with me on his own will. Yeah. He said, you just answered your own question. I said, wow. He said, and if you give him his own free will, then there has to be an evil. Whoop. Yeah. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on now. There has to be an evil yeah. because I gave him a free will. Yes, sir. He might not serve me. Only I know that. But I know if I give them a free will like I gave the angels, something's going to go their own way. That's right. So, 
So I have to have a remedy for when they go their own their wrong way. Oh God. Yeah. I've already prepared a remedy for them going the wrong way. Yes, sir. Somebody help me. Amen. When God saw everything that he made, he said it was good. Everything he made was good, but evil did exist. It just not, it just had not entered into what he created. Let me tell you what the devil's job is to corrupt God's creation. He's the corrupter. God is the creator, he's the corrupter. But God had a remedy for the corruption. Jesus. I'm here to tell you this morning that whatever you're going through, let God be perfected in you. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Don't let him steal your praise, man. Because if he can take your praise, he's taking it all. You want to doubt what's being. And look here. Remember, I said this is, you know, that's a lie when they tell you, you don't need to go to church. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's relationship. That is true. Yeah. But you need fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell nobody you don't need to go to church. Don't let nobody tell you that. Because what happens is the devil want to isolate you. Yes. Get you by yourself, like Sister Keith said. And then what he does is suppress you, oppress you, depress you. When you can come to church and get encouraged. Right. See, because when you come amongst the brothers and sisters, there's exhortation, yeah. Yeah. edification, uh, and punishment. Come on, somebody. You can be lifted up when you're with the brothers. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. That's what church is for. Amen. You need church. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Church don't make you say church is a privilege. Amen. Uh, Jesus said, and then he gave you the church for privilege. Hey, here's what you're going to need. It's church. Come on, somebody. So don't let nobody lie to you and tell you you don't need to go to church. Because guess what? You can come to church one way and leave another. Come on, somebody. Opposed to staying home and getting more depressed. When you can come to church and get that mess off you, there's a word that can release you from that. Are y'all with me? Amen. Can I preach just a little bit? Come on. Is that all right? Can I, can I preach just a little bit? Let me, let me, let me share something. We're going to meet to. The book of James. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I want to finish our Bible study. I want to finish our day. You know. Is that all right? Go to the book of James, everybody there but me. I just want to share this with you. The book of James, verse chapter 5, verse 16. This is where we ended. Wednesday night in Bible study. Wasn't that a good lesson? Yes. Yes. 16. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Are you there? Confess your faults one to another. Y'all hear that? And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth what? Confession. He says confess or declare, admit, amen, your faults. Faults, uh, another definition for that, sins or misdeeds or, you know, something you've done, amen. He said we can confess it to one another. Are y'all with me? Amen. He says, jump to 18, and he prayed, excuse me, I'm sorry, 
Uh, 19. Brethren, if any of you do err or go, that word err means to go astray from the truth and want convert him, let him know that word convert means to bring back again. Let him know that he has converted the sinner from the error of his way. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to confess our faults to one another. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's rightly divide the word. Amen? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm help. You know, God going to show us how to restore someone. Because the scripture says you can restore someone, but amen, you need to know how to restore them. Amen. amen. So, amen, first, number one, confess your faults to one another. Amen. amen. Praise God. Come with me to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Are y'all with me? Y'all with me? Amen. I got something I want to look at right quick. Just, just give me a... I, I have you out of here in a little bit. I just... I got to get... This. Somebody need to hear this. I was going to stop because I said, no, somebody need to hear this. And I'm going to get it to you. Amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. It says, Brethren, if any of you be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual... Restore or to recover, you know, recover some. Restore. Watch this. Restore means I found this is an old definition. I thank God it was in here. To to complete, to mend what has been broken, to repair, or to make one what he ought to be. Amen. So if any of you are overtaken in a fault, you went to spiritual, restore the one that's overtaken in a fault. Put him back where he ought to be. Are y'all with me? So you can restore your brother. You can put him back where he's ought to be. Are y'all with me? Amen. And he says, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Are y'all with me? First thing to confessing your faults to one another, make sure you confess it to someone that's spiritual. Somebody help me. Amen. Make sure who you confessing your fault to is spiritual because you won't be restored. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. You won't be restored, you'll be condemned. That's right. Don't confess your fault to a Pharisee. Because if you confess your fault to a religious person, he's going to judge you religiously. Amen. Come on, somebody. But you go to a spiritual person and confess your fault, he'll restore you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me. And, and watch this. That means if, if you come to me and confess your fault to me, brother, and I confess my fault to you, if you're in a fault and you say, man, I'm going to go to Pastor Tim and confess this thing, don't you know when you leave from me, you should what you came and confessed, should've, you should have left with me. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. And that is repenting. You change your mind, you change your thought, you change your attitude. Are y'all with me? Amen. Confess your faults. Now, come with me. Somebody say confess. Confess. Yes. Confess your faults. Come with me to Genesis. Genesis confess. Confession. See, and I gotta backtrack. Is this alright if I backtrack? Then I go to Genesis. This is gonna come out later. I, I, you know, just Roll with me. I got a backtrack for you to get what I'm trying to show you today. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Because we dealt with a, a, a something in the church. Amen. There's, there's a message that's going on in the church today uh, that Jesus can be your Savior and not your Lord and all that stuff. And so we dealt with that. But we dealt with, amen. Remember when Jesus, amen, praise God, you Bible scholars, amen, for the sake of time. I want, if you've read your Bible, you'll know what I'm talking about today. You remember when, amen, um, when Jesus had risen from the dead, amen, and Mary came to him, amen, and she said, Lord, and everybody was in Bible study, know where I'm going with this, but she said, Lord, amen, praise God, and Jesus told Mary not to touch him, 
Amen. Praise God. He said, touch me not for I am not ascended to the Father. And we know that, amen, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament testifies of who? Christ. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Jesus told the Pharisees, you search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Y'all with me? So what he was saying, there was no New Testament. I just got to preach this thing. It's all right. I got to preach all the way up to what I'm trying to get you to. So follow me. Stay on the ride. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So Jesus told the Pharisees, you search the scripture and in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. There was no New Testament then. It was the Old Testament. Are y'all with me? So Jesus was saying, when you go to the Old Testament, the Old Testament testify of me. The law and the prophets are a witness of me. It's all about me. That's what Jesus was saying. The scriptures testify of me. When he ascended up into the hill, amen, of transfiguration, the Bible says that Moses and Elijah was there talking to Jesus. That represented the testimony. They were witnesses, amen. Moses represented the law and Elijah represents the prophets, amen. Those were witnesses, amen. They testify of Christ. So any Anytime you read the Old Testament, I'm going to give you a little nugget. Anytime you read the Old Testament, look for Jesus. Amen. Because if you read the Old Testament and not looking for Jesus, you'll find legalism. Amen. And when you put it on people, you'll bring legalism out of the old if you're not looking for Jesus. But if you find Jesus in the Old Testament, you'll see a testimony. And then you can appreciate the Old Testament. Somebody help me up to this place. All right, so, so when you go to the Old Testament, you look for Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. I know where I'm going. I ain't forgot. And so Jesus told Mary, he said, don't touch me yet. For I have not ascended to my Father. Are y'all with me? So in the Old Testament, you got to go to the Day of Atonement to get what Jesus was, was talking about right there. In the Old Testament, God told the priest, he said, he told Aaron, he said, I want you to cast lots uh, and on the Day of Atonement. And one lot will be for the sin offering and the other lot will be for the, the scapegoat. Amen. And so, amen, he said, and the lot that fall, the Lord's lot will be the sin offering. That goat, the lot that fell on the Lord, the Lord's lot, amen, that goat would be the sin offering and the other goat would be the scapegoat. Now the sin offering he would offer up that, 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 that sin goat for the sins of the people. Y'all with me? His blood, amen, was an atonement for the people. Now the scapegoat amen, was to be carried out by the fit man. Are y'all with me? There was only one man and he was the fit man to carry the scapegoat out into the wilderness. But before he carried out the scapegoat, they laid their hands. Y'all follow me? Y'all with me? They laid their hands on the scapegoat to confess their sins. Now, I, I want to make sure you catch this. God said, amen, in, when he told Levi, when he told Aaron, he said, look here, Aaron, he said, when you bring this scapegoat before me, the scapegoat was to be presented. I can't let you miss that because then it'll take away everything I'm trying to tell you. The scapegoat was to be presented before the Lord alive. Amen. Uh, are y'all with me? Yeah. So they present the scapegoat before the Lord alive. They would lay their hands on the scapegoat, confessing. Somebody say confessing. Yeah. You would declare and admit they would confess all their sins on the scapegoat. And the scape, the fit man, there was only one fit man that could take this goat out into the wilderness. Y'all with me? He was the fit man to carry away that scape, take that scapegoat, and the scapegoat represent the carry away of the people sins. He will be presented alive before the Lord, then he will carry away the people's sins. That's why Mark, uh, the Lord told Amen Mary, don't touch me not because he said, touch me not Mary because I'm fulfilling scripture right now. I'm going to present myself before the Lord because I am that scapegoat that's carrying away your sins. Y'all want to help me up in this place. And so what they will do, they will confess their sins on the scapegoat. We don't have to confess our sins Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he said, I am the, the skin, not only am I the sin offering, because the sin offering, amen, that sin offering purged, that represents the covering of their sins. Yes, sir. Ooh, somebody help me. Come on now. The blood covers. Y'all with me? Yes, then the scapegoat represents the carrying away. Remember John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God mm -hmm. to take away. Come on, somebody. See, but after you get saved, now you need the blood to cover you. Oh, okay. yeah. Boy, this is good stuff, man. I, I said, Jesus is the scapegoat that took it away. And the blood covers you. 
Follow me, follow me, follow me. Remember in Egypt when God told Moses to put the blood, he said, I'm going to come through Egypt this night and I'm going to smite every firstborn in Egypt. I want you to take blood, the blood of a pure lamb, a lamb without blemish. I want you to put the blood on the doorposts and the lentils. He said, now when I pass through this night, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You better help me. That nothing separated the children of Israel from the children of Egypt but the blood. Y'all better help me. He said, the only, I'm not going to look at you because if I look at you, I destroy you. But I'm going to look at the blood. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Come on, somebody. So you're covered by the blood. That's that sin offering on the day of atonement. It's that blood that a man covers you. Are y'all with me? So after you get saved, you need to be covered. Christ did it all. Come on, somebody. And so the scapegoat, amen, he said, Mary, touch me not, for I have not ascended to my father. So the scapegoat represents Christ. The fit man we found out represents Christ. Amen. There was only one in heaven we found out in, on Wednesday night. There was only one in the book of Re Revelation that was fit, the scripture says, that was fit to open the scroll. Come on, somebody. So Jesus is that fit man. Come on, somebody. So he's the fit man, he's the scapegoat, and he's the sin offering. It's all about him. Y'all with me? Come on, somebody. The blood, amen, watch this, the blood, the blood of the Lord. Somebody say blood. blood. The blood always take away curses. Yes, the blood represents sacrifice. So, amen, watch this, when, 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 when Noah, when God had flooded the earth, the scripture says that Noah offered up the clean beast. And the scripture says, God said, I will no longer curse the ground again. So the blood takes away the curse. The sacrifice takes away the curse. Jesus took away the curse of the law. Oh, so by, by, by him sacrificing himself, he took away the curse of the law. Are y'all with me? I'm going somewhere. So now watch this. We, we, we find what we find, amen, even with the scapegoat, amen, they laid their hands on the gate for confessing their sins. Now, here's the key. People say, you know, we've heard the strength up about repentance. Repentance is not something you say. Repentance is something you do. Amen. Somebody help me. It is a verb. We want to understand this, amen, because there, the Bible says the law came by Moses. Grace and truth came by who? Jesus. Grace without truth is perverted. Oh, somebody help me. Grace without truth is perverted grace. And you got a lot of folks saying you can live how you want to. And it's okay. That's perverted grace. Grace and truth. Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Repentance, watch this. You don't have to tell. See, in the Old Testament, they confess their sins. Are y'all with me? In the New Testament, you confess. Why? Because he covers you and he took it away. So all you need to do is confess him. Because he's the one that took it away. He's the one that covers you. So you confess Jesus. When you confess Jesus, now, in the scripture says, a man confess the salvation, but you believe unto righteousness. If you truly believe, you'll repent. Yeah, yes, sir. Mm. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Amen. Repentance. Repentance is change of attitude. Yeah. Change of mind. Change of action. Amen. This is, I confess Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. When you confess Jesus, you turn immediately away from what you were doing Amen. and start maturing. Yes. Are you going to have faults? Yes. Amen. 
Yes. But you're on the road to recovery. Yes. yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. Somebody help. Repentance is simply change of mind. <laughs> That's what it is. The scripture says that God repented that he had created man. Huh? He said, it repented me that I made man. God repented that he made you. Wow. I got so much in me, I can't go to, I, get with me at the church and I give you the scripture. Can I just give it to you? Can I give it to you? God repented that he made man because their ways were so corrupted on the earth. He didn't repent for making the earth. He repent because he made man. So in other words, God changed his mind about you. Wow. Wow. Oh, Y'all better help me up in this place. He changed his mind, Brother Twan. He changed his attitude towards you. They so corrupt, man, I repent that I made them. Woo, boy, that's what. And you mean to tell me you don't need to repent if God repented? Come on now. Come on. Come on, sir. Huh? And you got four all covered. I don't got to repent, but God repented. Amen, God amen. repented. God repented. I repent that I've made. Now watch. God is so righteous. God, if you look in this, I believe it's in Genesis chapter 5 right at the end because, no, excuse me, it's in Genesis chapter 8 because in chapter 9, he started talking to Noah about the covenant. But in chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8, he said, he said, you know, I, 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 in, in chapter 6, I'm sorry, that's when he said, I repented. In chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8, he said, I won't curse them after Noah made a sacrifice. Uh -huh. Woo, well, yeah. huh. Y'all better get this thing, man. Are y'all with me? I got to show y'all. Y'all looking like, hey, what you talking about, Pastor? Come on, chapter 6 of Genesis. Chapter 6 of Genesis. Now, y'all roll with me because uh, this thing's going to get good, all right? Yeah. Get, stay with me right quick. Come with me to Genesis chapter 6. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I gotta qualify what I'm saying. I see right now. Y'all, oh, brother, don't just freak. Show me, brother. Show me. I see the show me's. Watch this. Genesis chapter 6. Watch this. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and the, the, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was what? What? And it what? It repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. God was grieved that he made man. Come on somebody. That's why you need to thank God. It grieved him that he made because man was so corrupt. The devil, I told you, the enemy corrupts God's creation. Yes, that's right. And so he corrupted everything God created. And God saw, all he saw was the devil working. Come on. Yep. That he said, it repented me. I repent that I made him. Amen. You know what? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. And the Lord said, I will destroy man from whom I created from the face of the earth. Both man, beast, and the creeping things, fowls of the air. It repented me. Look at that. That I have made them. That's quiet over here. Yeah. Jump over to verse. Jump over to verse chapter eight. Y'all still with? Me? So we see God repented, right? Yeah. Huh? Amen. See, we gotta follow God's pattern. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is some good teaching. Watch this. Now watch this. Chapter eight, verse twenty. And Noah built an ark unto the Lord. An altar, I'm sorry. An altar unto the Lord. Y'all with me? Yeah. An altar is a place for sacrifice. Boy, boy, boy. Come on now. And took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offer what? Uh, on the what? And the Lord smelled it. Y'all see that? And a, a sweet savor unto the Lord. Excuse me. And the Lord said in his heart, in his heart. I will not curse again the ground anymore for man's sake. A sacrifice changed his mind. Amen. He smelled it and said, Woo! I'm not going to curse. The blood tells me to curse. Yeah. 
take away the curse. Yeah. This is a picture of Christ. Well, y'all, come on now. I said it's all about Jesus. Yeah. This is a testimony of Jesus. It's His blood that caused God to say, yes. mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna curse them. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Amen. It caused God. Jesus caused God to. It was a, His sacrifice was a sweet smelling savor unto God. Are y'all with me? The blood removes the curse. But watch this. God is so, watch this now. Jump over to verse 9, chapter 9. God repented that he made man. But watch what he tell Noah over here. God is good. Watch what he tell Noah. In verse 8. And God spake unto Noah and his sons with him, saying, and I, behold, I will establish my covenant with you. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. And with your seed after you. And every living creature that is with you, and of the fowl, the, of the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, from all that I, excuse me, all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with who? You. Neither shall all flesh be what? God. By the waters of a flood, neither shall there be any, excuse me, neither shall any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Y'all with me? And God said, this is the token, or that token means, that word token means sign. A signal, a sign, a warning, a standard. That's what token means. Are y'all with me? He says, he said, this is the token of the covenant. Covenant means agreement. Which I have made, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow, a rainbow, y'all, a bow. That, amen. I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign, a signal, warning, and a standard. Y'all with me? Of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be, and it shall come to pass, I will bring, excuse me, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that bone shall be seen in the what? And I will remember my covenant. See, God did not change what he thought about man. He needs something to remind him not to destroy man. The sacrifice removed the curse. The bow caused him to remember. Woo, yeah. Come on now. Come on, come on. But I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm telling you. I know this deep stuff here. I said the the, the, the blood, the, the sacrifice Noah did removed the curse. Uh -huh. And the bow caused him to remember the covenant that he made. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Said, I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Y'all with me? And the water shall no more become what? A flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And when I look upon it, grace and mercy, y'all. Somebody better say compassion. When I look, that's what mercy means. When I look upon it, that, that I may remember my everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh upon the earth. God said, when I looked at, I looked at the bone. Yeah. Yeah. Not to destroy everything that's living. Yeah. The, the bone reminds me, well, hold on. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, I made a covenant. Because I'm not a covenant breaker. I made a covenant not to destroy. <laughs> it reminds me, somebody said remember. Yeah. Said it reminds me not to destroy every living thing. Are y'all with me? Amen. So even when we get to Exodus, we see, amen, that God said, when I see the blood, the blood was a sign that I'm going to pass over you. Come on, somebody. Amen. And God said, I remember. But we know we see that God repented. Come with me to Exodus. I want to show y'all, we, 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 I said all this because I know we're talking about the key to restoring your brother. Right? Mm -hmm. But we see, y'all thought I forgot, I forgot. Mm -hmm. You probably forgot. <laughs> but the key to restoring your brother, I said all this to say this. 
Go to me, go with me to Exodus 32. And we're gonna close with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it with this. I'm gonna end it like this. But the key to restoring your brother, we gotta look at God. Right? We gotta look at the Lord. It says in verse 32, chapter, chapter 1. And when the people saw that Moses, Moses went up to go get the Ten Commandments. Amen. He went to go up and get the law of God. Praise God. And Moses, it said, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of, out, excuse me, of the land of Egypt, we woke not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off golden earrings which are in the ears of of your wives and sons and your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Y'all with me? And he received them at their hand and fashioned it and with a graven tool after he had made a molten calf. And they said, these be our gods. Y'all with me? O oh, Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Y'all, y'all see this? God brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Now here they couldn't wait on the Lord, so they said, watch this. Uh, 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 we're going to make our own gods. And, and, and these are the gods that's brought us up out of Egypt. Not God. These gods. Are y'all with me? Amen. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar. Now he's going to build an altar. Are y'all with me? And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Do y'all see this? They can go feast to the Lord off something. That's just crazy. But watch this. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose up to play. Y'all with me? Just playing too much. Watch this. And the Lord said to Moses, get thee, get thee down for the thy people, which thou brought, brought us up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. First God disowned them. That's right. Your people. Uh -huh. Not mine. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. I said the Lord disowned them. Uh -huh. Y'all better know the God you serve. Yeah. He disowned them. Oh, that ain't no. That ain't none of mine corrupting themselves like that. That's right. Come on. Amen. Matter of fact, they're yours, Moses. Yes. And Moses like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Nelly. <laughs> so they have turned aside quickly, quickly out of the way which I command them. They have made the molten calf and have worshipped it and have, and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, excuse me, that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great nation. Y'all with me? Come with me over to, stay up, keep your finger there, and call me to do the running right quick. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8, 9. Y'all there? Yeah. He said, Now let me alone in, in Exodus 32, that, I, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make thee a what? Great nation. Now, over in Deuteronomy chapter 9, we write the divide of the word. Look at verse 18. Y'all with me? Moses said, I fell down before the Lord. Y'all with me? Uh -huh. As at the first 40 days and 40 nights, and I did neither eat bread nor drink because of all your sins, ye sin in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Y'all see that? So I, I went there just to say this. Moses started interceding. Are y'all with me? He interceded for him. Jesus made intercessions for who? Okay. So this is a picture of what Christ do for you. He, he, he's ever before the Lord making intercessions for who? The saints. Are y'all with me? It's all about 
about Jesus. Now come back to watch this. Come back to this. I want to show you something. I want to close with this. I said all this just to get to this. Amen. Amen. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, y'all see this? Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power. Y'all see this? With a mighty hand. What is Moses doing? He glorifying God. Is he not? Anybody with me on that? Amen. Where, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and re what? Repent. Moses is telling the Lord to repent. <laughs> but we don't have to. Come on now, I ain't gonna say it. Somebody help me. Say it. And here we see Moses telling God to repent. Lord, repent mm -hmm. of what you about to do. Mm -hmm. Change your mind, change your attitude, and change your actions. Amen. Oh. Amen. Here we see men talking to God, interceding for God's people, talking to God, trying to get God to repent. Oh, so. Come on now. So that means intercession can change God's mind. Amen. Oh. Intercession can cause God to repent. Yes, oh. I'm going to turn another way. Amen. Hey, you don't have to repent. Uh, huh? Come on. Watch this. Now watch this. Now watch this. He said, now watch what he said. Remember. Somebody say remember. Remember. Remember comes before repentance. Boy, this is not this is a Bible study. It's good stuff. Remember, remembrance come before repentance. Why, why do you say that, preacher? Watch this. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, thy servants, to whom thou what? By thy own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all and, and all this land that I spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever and the Lord repented of the evil he thought wow. to do to his people and Deuteronomy said he repented at Moses word mm -hmm. oh somebody help me Amen. so he repented in his what he thought to do see the, the devil Repentance starts right here. Yeah. Change of mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all with me? Yes, change of attitude, change of action. But what the Lord showed me that was key to this was remember. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you get me? Come on now. Watch this. And he stopped me. When I, I, I read all of that for the Lord to show me. The only way you the only way you can restore your brother is cause them to remember where he was in the Lord. The key, the key to restoring one in the spirit of meekness, putting them back where they ought to be, is causing them to remember where they was in God. Because if you don't cause them to remember, you'll condemn. You will do two things: cause them to remember or condemn them. If you're not spiritual, you won't cause them to remember. Brother, you remember when you was on the praise and worship team? Man, you remember how God was using you? Boy, you used to bless so many people. It worked for God. It worked for God. All Moses had to do was cause God to remember. Awesome. I'm telling you, I'm giving you something key. I'm giving you something key this morning. It ain't no jump up and down word, but I'm giving you something key. He calls God to remember. He said, Lord, remember? God, God already knew, but look what's look how God worked with man. 
I'm finna go down in the storm. Hold on, remember. Remember, remember, Lord. Repent of what you about to do. Remember. Say it again, sister. He listens. And you have to remind God. He said, remember the scripture says, God repented. He changed his mind what he was going to do to the children of Israel. And y'all tell me we don't need intercession. Intercession intervenes on your behalf. Intercession calls God to change his mind. And it also restores the one that you're interceding for. And when you're interceding or when you restore this person, you cause them to remember. Man, remember. In the spirit of meekness. Remember. Amen. Remember, remember how God used to use you. Yeah. Not brother, you sinner. Yeah. You on your way to hell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you wrong. You a heathen. Mm -hmm. You need to come back to God. You ain't no earthly good. No. <laughs> and you push him far away. No. What did Moses say? Get him, God. <laughs> you right, Lord. Mm -hmm. They have no business. Matter of fact, I'll go slay them for you. <laughs> but no, but Moses knew the character of God. Mm -hmm. So I just have to remind God. He's angry right now. See, when God is angry, see, God hates sin. And when God is angry with you, guess what you need? You need your brother yes. to intercede for you. Yes. Lord, remember. Remember. Mm. Yeah. That's why confession is good for the soul. You don't have to confess. Look, you don't, let, me, let, me, let me get this straight right now. You don't have to go to no. See, confession is not going to some man confessing your sins and going back to sin. That's not. Let me go with my confession in this week and I can go right back to my sin. That's not repentance. That's just a confession. And God said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And you got millions of people just going to a place every week to confess something to a man. And then he said, you forgive me. And they go right back to the same sin. That's not repentance. Say a bunch of these and a bunch of Hail Marys. I'm good. Let me go back to sinning. I'm good. I ain't coming against nobody religion, but that ain't God. That's not repentance. Repentance is turning away and going the other direction. Not, oh, I confess the Father to you. And then I tell you, oh, you forgive me, brother. Go on, do what you do. Get, back, get with me next week and I'll forgive you again. No, no. It don't work that way. It don't work that way in the kingdom of God. You confess Jesus, you turn away. Somebody else. It's just as simple as that. When you restore your brother, this is this is serious to me because it is serious to God. Because too many people get hurt in church because we don't know how to restore. There's more people running from church than to church. My job is not to condemn you nor point out your sin. My job or my assignment from God, your assignment from God if you're a Christian, is restore your brother when they do fall. Amen. And how do you restore them? You cause them to remember Amen. the good times. Amen. You cause them to remember. You remember when you was on the deacon board? You remember when that sister got saved because that song you that song you sang? You remember, man, all the people came to Christ and people you bought to. You remember, you don't miss that, bro? Man, we miss you, man. People need you in their life. Bro, you, you're an awesome, awesome minister. Come on, somebody. They don't need to be beat down, they need to be lifted up. Yes. You remember that? Remember when God used to use you? God want to use you again, man. 
Brother, brother, the Bible said a just man falls seven times and he get back up. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. Brother, your steps are ordered by God. Though you fall, you shall not be utterly cast down, for God will uphold you, man, with his right hand. God is holding you up, brother. Get up, man. Amen. Huh? Why are you saying this, Pastor? Because we got a lot of brothers falling when they come to this church. And God wants us to restore them. And the way to restore them is cause them to remember. Amen. You cover them with love. <laughs> and you restore them with meekness. Amen? Amen. Give them all a hand, praise. <laughs> Come on, give them praise. We have a message within a message today. Amen. Amen. So what happened when I go over, I got a lot to say. Amen. But God is good. Come on, praise the Lord in this house. God is so good. Yes. Pastor said that he would be restored. And um, yes, years ago, I was doing a lot of things for God. And for some reason, I'm feeling that I'm supposed to share like two or three signs with you so that you know in your mind that you're going to be saved from this. Okay, the first one, Pastor, that. This one is sin. Mm. And I this would find that that it's in our body. Mm. And we don't want that in our lives. Mm. And it binds us. Mm. And what Jesus does for us is he frees us. Yes. Man. So I don't know who that's for. I don't mm. know if it's for me. I don't yeah. know if it's for somebody else. Mm. But just remember that Jesus frees us. Woo! Bye, 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 bye. Amen. 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 I, I like that. Yes, sir. He frees us. Mm -hmm. Jesus does. Mm -hmm. You're free this morning. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that. You need to know that you're free in Jesus Christ. Yes. He sets you free. You don't have to be bound mm -hmm. in your mind. Salvation, watch this. He saved you from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the pleasure of sin. You saved from all that. You saved Amen. from death. Amen. Salvation is setting you free. Mm -hmm. And Jesus broke the chains of yeah. death. Yeah. He got up from that grave. Amen. You free this morning. And if you want us to stand in agreement with you, you believe that you know, Pastor, I want to be free in my mind. See, because repentance starts with the mind. You need to know in your thoughts. You need to know in your mind that you're saved. You need to know that he came to say, you need to be delivered up here first. And when you deliver up here, everything else will change. Amen. We want to pray with you this morning. That you come. We want to pray with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten <coughs> son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is your opportunity to come. Come right now. We want to pray with you. Amen. We want to pray with you. Amen. If you're back.